All right, now it's time to try something harder. Moving camera shots. This is the one I see everybody struggle with, and for good reason. It can be very difficult to control exactly how the cam path turns out because of how strange they behave. They tend to wobble around a lot. And they might oscillate when you don't want them to. Sometimes the camera may even start tilting or rolling sideways for no reason, which is bad, in my opinion, because even a little bit of that gives me motion sickness. Yeah, frustrating stuff. So I'll look to make a separate video on how to handle that kind of stuff down the line. But for now, let's just learn the basics. Now, if we were using the traditional replay system, we'd be manually moving our camera along the path we want and just record the resulting footage, right? But if you try to do the same thing with the HLE FreeCam, the raw movement is nowhere near as smooth. It's gonna look rough and jittery. You could try recording the raw movement, and it is a viable option in some cases, but you're generally gonna wanna use cam pass because they're smoother and more flexible. So don't be lazy. You should take the time to learn this. And conceptually, it's not all that different. Replays are about tracing the path you want, and HLAE is about tracing that same path while placing points. The challenge is mastering your control over how the resulting camp path turns out. And to do that, for starters, it's best to learn a little bit about how they're made. Each of these points you'll be placing is called a key frame, which shows exactly where the camera will be positioned and oriented at different points in time. If you place at least four key frames, HLE will smoothly connect all the frames to generate your final camp path. How exactly is it generated? with an algorithm called cubic spline interpolation. Now, before you start crying, you don't need to know the math. You just need to understand the behavior a little bit. And one way to learn is by using a simulator. I found this one on the Desmos website. It's very simplified since it's only two dimensions and allows only four points, but it should get some key concepts across. If you play around with this, there are behaviors you'll pick up on. For example, one behavior is how changing a point can influence other parts of the curve nearby you might not expect. Sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's a lot. You may have to draw points in a way that takes this into account. So try and get a good sense of how this works so it doesn't surprise you in practice. Another behavior which can cause trouble is the tendency to wiggle or oscillate. Oftentimes the camp path tends to overshoot or overcompensate, causing the curve to go outside your intended path. Here, you can see a classic case of this behavior, where I'd like this curve to follow a straight line between these three points before moving down, but the curve bends up here to compensate for the move down. You're going to have to get a sense of how to fix this kind of stuff, which comes with practice. Move the points around to see what tends to reduce or worsen the oscillation. At a certain point, you should start to have an idea of what you'll need to do to get what you want. There can be more than one solution, and for this case, a configuration like this reduces the oscillation. Note that this kind of thing especially tends to happen if you pack many points close together. If you try to draw points in extreme ways, the camera will have to take extreme paths to connect them. Generally, a lower amount of points lowers the chances of complication. That's not to say that lots of points don't work. It may actually be the solution to add more points to fight against oscillation. Now imagine adapting all this knowledge to 3D position and 3D rotation and the time dimension. Pretty hard to think about. And speaking of the time dimension, the final aspect you should understand is the camera speed. In replays, you can just set the speed you want and move around. But with cam pass, the speed instead depends on the position of your keyframes. For example, if you set two keyframes five seconds apart, it will take five seconds for the camera to cover that distance. If you set them 10 seconds apart, it will take 10 seconds to cover that same distance, which is a slower speed. If instead you set them twice as far apart from each other, it will have to cover a larger distance in the same amount of time, which is a faster speed. 
So what you need to understand is that your speed depends on both the time and space between your keyframes. And even then, it's not that simple because the speed itself can oscillate in a similar way to what we discussed earlier, meaning it can speed up, slow down, and speed up again to compensate for your keyframes. This might seem like a headache, but as long as you understand the concept of what's driving your speed, you'll be fine. It's not like you'll be thinking about numbers and dimensions the whole time. Instead, you'll usually be handling your speed more intuitively by either setting your free cam speed and tracing a path, or by following a reference point, such as following a player, or perhaps by just guessing and seeing what works. Yeah, that seems about right. I think it's useful to have a better idea of what to expect when dealing with camp pass. But ultimately, the best way to master camp ass is with lots of practice and experience. Let's try it out. Alright, for this example, we're going to load a random old demo file. Nothing special going on in this one, just regular gameplay. So, first, as a starter exercise, we're going to play around and draw points everywhere, just to get a feel for camp ass. If you want, you can press J to make your path visible on the screen, so it's easier to see what you're doing. If you're here from the first video, the old camp path you previously made is still going to be there. Camp paths don't go away until you delete them or close the game. If you forget about this, your camp path is going to include these old points and confuse you, so type the command merv camp path clear to remove it. Now we can go into the free camp mode, enable third person, Press play, and start moving around and placing points with the zero key. Remember, you can adjust your movement speed with the plus and minus keys to help with positioning. Go crazy with it. You can try to draw straight lines, circles, or zigzags at varying speeds and angles. You can also turn the camera in place while spamming points, perhaps to track a specific player, or maybe you want to follow someone around the map. Do whatever you please. After you're done, you can pause, exit the free cam, and go back to the tick mark you started on to see how your camp path turned out. Before you play, check to make sure you've exited the free cam with escape, or else nothing will happen and you'll just be stuck frozen in free cam. Only when you exit free cam mode can you view your camp path. Now, if needed, enable your camp path, enable third person, hide the drawn camp path with K, then press play to see what your camp path looks like. So how to turn out? Perhaps very erratic, perhaps a little clumsy looking, perhaps just how you expect it. Keep experimenting as much as you like. If you want to start over and try again, use Merv Camp Path Clear and repeat the process from the beginning tick mark. If you want to try editing only a small part of your path, you can delete specific points with Merv Camp Path Remove. Also, it's a good idea to save your work often. You don't want to lose your progress if your game crashes. You can save your work with Merv Camp Path Save, and you can load your path with Merv Camp Path Load. Now, let's talk about editing. The process for editing camp paths might seem daunting, but there's a straightforward way to go about it. To demonstrate, let's say we have a camp path that clips into the wall. The way I usually go about editing is to play the camp path, then pause at the moment when I want the camera in a different spot. I go into the free cam mode with backspace, adjust the camera to the spot I want, place a new camp path point, and if needed, remove any old ones that don't help. In some cases, you may not need to remove any. In other cases, it may be best to just start over completely. Keep repeating this process until you're satisfied. That's about it. Once you start to feel more comfortable drawing camp paths, we can move on to learning the different ways you can go about drawing them. There's two main ways to go about drawing camp path points. The first is to play and draw. The second is to pause and draw. 
Play and draw is what we did first. We play the demo and try to draw our camp path in real time. As you'd imagine, this can be challenging to do at 100% speed, but you have the option to slow down the playback speed to make it easier to line up your points while it's playing. You can use the time scale slider, the binds, or the command to change the speed. Perhaps 50% will be enough, or you might need to go all the way down to 1% to get things right. And what's nice is that your movement speed will remain consistent to whichever time speed you choose. Another adjustment you can make to help out is binding a more convenient key for placing camp path points. I intentionally made the zero key the camp path point button so that people wouldn't accidentally hit it when working with their demos. But if you don't like reaching over to press zero each time, you can bind left click on your mouse to make it easier to move and place points at the same time. You can enter this command in console to try it out. If you prefer having this bind, you can add it to your custom settings to make it the default so it always works each time you start up the software. The second method to draw in camp pass is to pause and draw. That means you'll pause the demo each time before you place a point, meaning you play, then pause and draw, then play, then pause, and draw again. Pretty similar to the previous method, the only difference being you have all the time in the world to line up your shot. This is the option you'd have to use if it's too difficult to trace your path in real time. Just pause at the right time, get to where you need to be, and draw your next point. Now, you don't have to do one method or the other. You can combine both and draw while it's paused or play. We'll do one more example, this time choosing a more deliberate and meaningful camp app, like you would in real videos. The process for choosing the best way to present a clip should be similar to example one. If you decide that a moving camp path is what works best for your particular clip, first, try to visualize in your head several possible ways to go about it. Then, choose whichever is your favorite and do your best to draw that path in the game. The possibilities are endless, and it all depends on what you come up with for your videos. For me, though, in this example, I've decided I'm going to attempt a wide shot of the environment, just slowly panning across the scene, a sort of showcase of the overall map. You can follow along in your own demo if you want, or come up with a different camera shot of your own and try and draw that instead. Here, at the beginning take mark, I'll try to get a sense of what path I want to trace by adjusting my speed and tracing the path I intend to take. I'll practice a few times to get my bearings and prepare to start drawing. When I'm ready, I'll position myself at the beginning and place my first point while paused. Then I'll press play and trace the path I want while placing camp path points. I've decided to use only four points, the minimum amount of points needed, because less points tend to introduce less complication in the path. They tend to be more smooth and predictable. For a simple path like this, four is all I need. Of course, for more complicated paths, you will need more points. When you finish drawing the final point, you can go back to see how it turned out. If you're not happy with how your path looks, use Merv Camp Path Clear or Merv Camp Path Remove to restart or edit your camp path. Depending on how complicated your camp path is, this process can take a few minutes to many hours. I've had many cases where it took a lot of trial and error to get exactly what I wanted. Camera work can be exhausting, so don't be afraid to take breaks and come back when you feel better. It's difficult and much more tedious compared to camera shots that stay still, so be prepared to put in some effort and remember to save your work. That wraps up the basics of moving camp S. It doesn't end there though. While I likened the mechanics of HLE to replays as the same process of tracing a path, just also placing points, 
There's still the struggle to resist the camp pass tendency to oscillate when you don't want it to, which, admittedly, is not an issue you would see in replays. I'll cover ways to handle this problem in the future, for example, through directly editing camp path files. And who knows, maybe someone could program easier solutions down the line. But in the meantime, the best way to learn is through practice, trial and error, and determination. If you're really struggling, though, you can ask me for help in the Discord, and I'll see what I can do for you. The next example, though, directly addresses a specific instance of this problem, and is very applicable to many camera maneuvers you want to use in your videos. So I strongly recommend you watch the next part, because it is by far the most useful technique you'll learn.